So moving forward, let's take up question number four. Let A, B and lambda be positive real numbers and P is an endpoint of lattice rectum of the parabola y square equals 4 lambda x. Now suppose the ellipse x square upon A square plus y square upon B square equals 1 passes through the point P. If the tangents to the parabola and ellipse at this point P are perpendicular to each other, then we have to find eccentricity of the ellipse. Pretty interesting one. Let us start by drawing coordinate axis first, say y axis and x axis. Now we can draw the parabola y square equals 4 lambda x. Let us say it is opening towards right side like this. Now we have an ellipse, correct? This ellipse x square upon a square plus y square upon b square equals 1. So let us consider ellipses like this one. Now these two are intersecting at these two points. It is clearly given it is intersecting at the end point of lattice rectum. So we have to talk about the end point of lattice rectum here. Let us draw join these two first. This is point P. What will be the coordinates for P? Lambda comma 2 lambda. Let us write down this is lambda 2 lambda. Now we can write tangent at P for parabola it is y square equals 4 lambda x is the parabola so y y1 equals 2 lambda into x plus x1 will be the tangent so 2 lambda y is equal to 2 lambda into x plus lambda now when you look at this tangent what you can conclude from here you can clearly see 2 lambda is cancelled y is x plus lambda what is the slope of this tangent 1 slope of this tangent is 1 now move on to ellipse for ellipse correct I am talking about tangent at P again for ellipse it will be x into lambda upon a square plus y into 2 lambda upon b square is equal to 1. Since the two tangents are perpendicular from here you have slope is equal to 1 and from here you have slope is equal to minus lambda upon a square multiplied by b square upon 2 lambda. Right? These two are perpendicular. That means minus 1 is minus b square upon 2a square or b square upon a square is equal to 2. So clearly we can say here b square is 2a square or b is root 2 times a. Right? So yes, the ellipse which is opening, it is along y-axis, not along the x-axis. Eccentricity, therefore eccentricity this is square root of 1 minus a square by b square correct a square by b square that is half 1 minus half will give you simply 1 by 2 and take its square root so this is 1 by root 2 so the required result for this question is 1 by root 2 time to check from the given options so we can see here option number a contains the same result that is 1 by root 2. So I am sure this question is also clear. Time to take up question number 5. Let C1, C2 be two biased coins such that the probabilities of getting head in a single toss are 2 by 3 and 1 by 3 respectively. Next, suppose alpha is the number of heads that appear when C1 is tossed twice. And beta is the number of heads that appear when C2 is tossed twice independently. Then the probability that the roots of the quadratic x square minus alpha x plus beta are real and equal, that is d is equal to 0, is we have to opt. Now when you are tossing coin twice, possibility for getting heads 0, 1, 2, this is clear. All right. So let's start this question and plan how we have to go for it. Let's consider for both alpha and beta like this. Now you have 0, 
वन टू जीरो वन टू करेक्ट जस्ट ड्रॉ द हॉरिजेंटल लाइन इन बिटवीन सो दैट यू कैन पाई फॉर केट प्रॉपरली नाउ वट द क्वेश्चन इज टॉकिंग अबाउट लेट्स रीड इट टू बाई थ्री इज द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ गेटिंग हेड इन अ सिंगल टॉस इट इज टॉस ट्वाइस सो जीरो वन टू जीरो वन टू दिस इज फॉर एल्फा दिस इज फॉर बीटा राइट नाउ हेयर द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ गेटिंग हेड जीरो टाइम मीनिंग probability of not getting heads probability of getting heads is 2 by 3 so for not getting it is 1 by 3 so on two tosses it is 1 by 9 now here once head meaning head tail or tail head twice of 1 by 3 into 2 by 3 so that is 4 by 9 getting both heads that is again 4 by 9 similarly here getting no heads probability of getting heads is 1 by 3 getting no heads is 2 by 3 so it is 4 by 9 again 4 by 9 and 1 by 9 so this is the configuration we are talking about now moving back let's read again suppose alpha is the number of heads that appear on c1 and beta on c2 then the probability that the roots of the quadratic are real and equal d that is alpha square minus 4 beta is equal to 0 this is what we are looking possible values for alpha and beta it is 0 1 2 only correct so what is the actual required case required cases for ordered pair alpha beta this is 0 0 when you say 0 0 alpha square minus 4 beta will become 0 or second 2 1 in each case alpha square minus 4 beta will be zero these are the only two possibilities so time to write the required probability therefore required probability is equal to 0 0 meaning 1 by 9 into 4 by 9 plus 2 meaning 4 by 9 into 1 that is 4 by 9 So this gives you four by eighty one plus sixteen by eighty one or twenty by eighty one. So the correct answer for this question is twenty by eighty one. Let's check out from the given options. Twenty by eighty one is given here as option number B. So yes, this is the required result. We have obtained the correct answer for this question of probability. I am sure this is clear. Let's take up the next one. That is question number six. Consider all rectangles lying in the region x comma y belonging to R cross R. X is in the interval zero to pi by two, and y is in the interval zero to two sine two x. So these are the two boundaries. Y equals zero and y equals two sine two x. This is clear. Okay, and having one side on the x-axis, the area of the rectangle which has the maximum perimeter among all such rectangles. multiple concepts integrated let's try out here we can start with the coordinate system say x axis and y axis drawn now if i write the curve y equals 2 sin 2x right so if i trace it in the interval 0 to pi by 2 i can clearly see this is moving in this fashion 0 to pi by 2 right here pi by 2 and here 0 now we are looking for a rectangle this time we have to draw inside it a rectangle like this say here now x axis is one of the possible sides when you write here say this is x for example can we find this point simply put x here so you have y is equal to 2 sin 2x so this point is x comma 2 sin 2x this point when you talk about rectangle this curve is symmetric about this line which is at the middle that is pi by 4 so yes whatever value you have taken for this part similar will be here so what we are left with in between 
this term is pi by 2 minus 2x. Now, we have to maximize the perimeter. So, let us plan for perimeter of this rectangle. Let us say p is the perimeter. This is 2a plus 2b. So, 2 times a plus b. a meaning say this one. It is pi by 2 minus 2x plus b meaning this one which is 2 sin 2x. To maximize, let us take the derivative. dp by dx is equal to, this becomes 0, this is minus 4x, so this is minus 4 plus 4 sin 2x, that is 8 cos 2x. When you say this is equal to 0, you get cos 2x is half and in the given interval, you can say 2x is pi by 3 or x is pi by 6. When you talk about the second derivative, you can clearly see this is negative at x equals pi by 6 because when you take the second derivative, it is coming as minus 16 sin 2x. When you put the value pi by 6, it is negative. So, clearly p is maximum at this value. Therefore, p is maximum at x equals pi by 6. Now, what the question is talking about? We have to find the area, correct? Area meaning A into B, product of sides. Therefore, area is A, length. What is that? Pi by 2 minus 2x, pi by 2 minus 2 into pi by 6, that is pi by 3. Multiplied with B, that is the height, 2 sin 2x. So, this is 2 into sin pi by 3 that is root 3 by 2. Just simplify you can see this is pi by 6 into root 3. So, you can write as pi upon 2 root 3 as the required result. Let us check out from the given options pi upon 2 root 3 it is given here as option number C. So, let us mark it as our required result. I am sure this is also clear time to take up question number 7 now.